Welcome back. My name is Nick Pierce. And if this was a midget prostitution ring, no one would really know because no one can see what goes on underneath the desk. But it's not. This is the Business of Arts, Music, and Entertainment, and welcome to Episode 10. Your performance agreement for your live show. Now, you got yourself in the door ready. You got a gig that's offered to you. And you want to make it clear between both parties as to what each other expects. So we know, or you should know by now, that you want money, you want time, and you also want control over your show. And the venue, on the other hand, wants money, they want a crowd, and they also may want control. So it needs to be profitable for both parties. And whether it's through money, turnout, or exposure, when dealing with the venue and making an agreement to perform, establish what the main goals are to both parties and then hash out the details. The details should always be outlined in an agreement or a contract. Now, hang on to your whoopee cushions. I've got a lot to throw at you right about now. You, you want to consider many options. One of which, does the venue provide a contract or do you need to provide a contract? The most ideal situation is to have a paper contract outlining the aspects of the gig. This option is more time consuming, so most people really don't do it. They just say, yay, we got in and we're going into play and they don't worry about the details. That could be very dangerous. The next best thing though, if a venue doesn't have a contract or is not willing to sign one, is just to have an email on which it addresses some of the following points and think about the gig there, there, there may be some that do or do not apply, but whether you have a contract or an email, you want it to address some of the following points. How the gig pays. Does the venue pay the band? Does the venue sell the band tickets to sell people? Does the venue take a cut of the door? Does the venue give the band a single payment and take all the door charge, that's something you want to outline. Is the venue all ages, or is it 18 plus, or 21 and over? Look at some of those. This will help you later on establish who you're promoting that gig to. The next thing you want to look at is does the venue do any promotion? Do they advertise in newspapers, have radio commercials on, and if they do, Will they put your band name or list you in those advertisements? And then, are there other bands on the bill? And can you bring other bands in or add other bands to the bill? You also want to look at what the capacity of the venue is. Um, the body count. How many people can get in there? If you know that you can sell 300 tickets or 300 people will be willing to see your band, but the venue only has 100 people capacity, are you really going to reach your goal or make the money that you know that you can make booking into a small venue or is the venue too big for you? And are you really going to make what you anticipate making? And then what equipment does the venue provide? PA, instruments, there's some places that I've played in the past that they have a drum kit. You have to use theirs. You can't use yours. However, you may need more than what the venue kit actually offers and you can't bring anything of yours on stage. Work all this out ahead of time. Do they have a PA system, sound system? Do they have monitors? Do they have a sound engineer even? Does the venue provide free drinks and meals for the band? Most venues will say, hey, we give you a, you know, 12 beers, 
unlimited water, unlimited fountain drinks, and each member of the band gets one meal if they have a kitchen there or something. And then how many people you could comp in or give complimentary tickets to. If you have a guest list, then you have certain people from media, press, and what we'll say media being news, magazines, anybody that's going to review your show, how many people is the venue going to allow in for free? And you want to work that all out ahead of time. Don't let them say you can only bring four people in and you have a media crew of 12 to 15 people or 20 people, and then you have to pay for them to get in because you're not going to make them pay. When do you expect to be in-house for load-in and setup? If you have a 9 o'clock start and the venue doesn't open until 9, work something out if you need to get set up. Or if they're open all day, find out if there's any restrictions to you setting up, tuning, sound check, and all that prior to when the doors open if they want you to start by the time the doors open. And then the contract should also outline the downbeat, the start time of your actual show. And then anything else you should know about playing at the venue. And that goes into who the main contact is the night that you're playing, if the owner's not going to be there, or if the booker that booked you is not going to be there. Also, um, the best load-in spots, such as back door, side door, front door, um, is there a ramp? Do you have a truck? Where is parking? If you're traveling on a bus, where does your bus park? Is there any parking accommodations? Dressing rooms, green rooms, backstage area, and storage for any equipment you're not using. Um, merchandise set up, so where can you put a table or your merchandise to be sold during the show that you're actually playing? And... Another thing beyond that is security. Who's responsible for security? Both at the door to make sure everybody's paying to get in, and while you're on stage, who's keeping people off stage from interfering with your show? And then any cancellation, whether acts of God or if the venue cancels, if you cancel, what are the repercussions from that? Make sure it's outlined. So you really want to look at those, and most importantly is how you get paid, because that's the reason why you're doing this, is to make money, and there are many ways that you can get paid for doing a gig. First of all, is just from a guarantee, which means that the venue or promoter is obligated to pay you a set amount determined before the date, no matter what the crowd. The other is a door charge. Now, there are two different door charges I want to discuss. And one of them is the promoter of venue gets a percentage of the door. The promoter may get maybe one, three, five dollars for every head, and you get the rest. Another part of the door charge is if you have multiple bands. Promoters or venues will know that there are so many bands on the bill. And they'll take account of how many people are coming to see each particular band. So if you have three bands on the bill, and one person walks up to the door, and they ask them, oh, who are you here to see? And they say band number one, and they mark that down. However, it works good and bad, because sometimes people may know to come to your show, but they may not always remember the name of your band when you're first starting out. Now, last time I played a show like this, it was perfect because everybody knew who we were. We did a great marketing campaign. We had postcards. We had flyers and all that. However, other bands, because the flyers and postcards were out there, didn't do as well. I mean, we made 300 bucks, and this is many years ago. You can also make sure to make that happen is that if you're one of three bands out there, someone standing outside the door with postcards and flyers with your band name on it, and as people are walking in, just say, hey, make sure you let them know that you're here to see whatever, and you hand them a flyer and show the person at the door your flyer. 
Aside from door charges, you may also end up playing for free. And this is another payment method, which is not really payment at all because it's free. However, playing for free in a good exposure opportunity is a good thing. People will see you if you're part of a festival or any major attracting event that doesn't necessarily revolve around bands, or if it does, just to get your name out there could be a good thing. Sell your merchandise, and that'll help subsidize what you're losing for playing for free. Now, another thing that I'm not a big fan of, but it does happen, and it's very rare that it does, is through tips. There are venues that do not pay and expect you to play unless you make tips. And, and this sounds crazy, but again, it's very rare. And if you do a good job, they tip you a percentage of a bar, they tip you a percentage, or they make you put a jar or a hat or like a, open your guitar case, they expect people to throw cash in there. I've always got away from all this, but some venues will pay you a percentage of what their profits are for that night just for playing. And it's kind of like playing for free. Expect to make nothing because you really have no idea what they're actually making to determine what the percentage is that you're supposed to be receiving. Ticket sales is another thing. Advanced ticket sales, tickets at the door, maybe the venue has a box office, and starting off small, you may be required to sell tickets. I would recommend never buy these up front. Sometimes a venue earn, that does the whole ticket thing will say, you buy 50 tickets, and as long as you sell half of them, you can play. Some of these are just bad deals. Most cases you're going to end up playing anyway. Either that or they overbook the venue for bands. And there's no guarantee your band is going to go on. But you, ultimately what happens is when venues tell you to buy them up front, walk away, find another venue, it's a ripoff. The other way to do a show, though, is to host your own. Space rental. Try to find like an American Legion, a VFW, an Elks Club, or one of those Eagles Clubs and, you know, private venues that you can actually pay rent to. And in most cases, the rent will also include staff, such as a door person, a bartender, custodial staff, and firehouses and all that. And you just pay them rent, and you host a private venue, build a show, advertise it and promote it and people will come and watch you and if you get a couple bands on there it could be very profitable. However, a note of caution. Once you pay them 100% of the rent that they want, you keep the rest. Don't let them charge you a percentage after you just paid for the rent. And you may have a good show, but don't let them screw you. Now, here's a tip. But I want you to watch out for something. Promoters and venues that may require you to pay a small fee or a deposit before the date. No. Typically, promoters and venues fees deposit, uh, pr promoters and venue fees will um, run you approximately $25 to $50. Tops, I'd be wary of a deposit that goes beyond that, but furthermore, I would not pay to play. You may want a sample contract for a performance agreement, I have them on my forms on disk. There's sample contracts on here that will help you to use with venues if a venue does not provide one, or you can just use them for guidelines. It's available on my website, www.nickpierceshow.com. I hope that my 20 years of experience in the entertainment industry has helped enhance and further your music, entertainment, and arts career. Until next time, I'm Nick Pierce.